I am heading out to the honey house to do some comb honey cutting. That's right, I said I'd do a video showing you my comb honey that I got. And that's what I aim to do. Well, hello there, folks. Welcome to Southeast Louisiana on a balmy 85 degree Fahrenheit day. It's actually cool. We've had a lot of rain. Had to work some bees this morning. The last eight colonies in town went and put some hop guard on them, and one got apigard because it began to rain on me. I had it with me, and I couldn't check queen right or anything, so I just slapped it in there and called it a day. Had some shims with me. Uh, but it looks it's been thriving it's got a lot of bees in it been had a lot of bees in it been had yeah that's that's right been had a lot of bees in it so good to go all hives have been assessed all hives are queen right all right let's get in the honey house and i will show you how i cut my comb honey and what i got this year and i'll have to refer you to a video that i'm going to put up in this corner up here uh how i set up my boxes if i can find it um because i didn't do one on how i set up my boxes let me tell you how that panned out i've been doing comb honey about six years now yeah six years yeah because i've been here five no i've been doing comb honey probably about seven years now and i do them in a shallow medium no that was a stupid statement a shallow box not a medium and so I learned that from a man, 50 year beekeeper, told my buddy that as we were talking with him and that's who I believe. So I went with him. So I do shallow boxes, shallow frames, and I use the ultra thin surplus foundation from Man Lake. <clears throat> and you can cut it in strips or you can use the whole sheet. And what I used to do is I did it in wedge type frames, cut the wedge out, nail the wedge back in with the foundation in. It wasn't wired foundation, obviously it can't be. So the wedges would hold it pretty good. Well, after about four seasons, kept using the same frames the wedges began to not hold it so good four or five seasons whatever but this I know two years ago two seasons ago and I think I have it on video they let go of the top and began to sag and they made some crazy combs so I had a bust that year uh, last year what I started doing was I put the foundations in and then I drip a little wax down in the grooves in about three spots on each side and that holds it into the top that way it doesn't sag, it stays nice and straight, pretty beautiful wax foundation. And I put it on when the flow just begins to really hit hard and I put it one to two, usually two supers above the lowest super, because I don't use excluders. Well last year, she went two supers up into that thing and hit four frames with brood and ruined it. But I still got half a box. This year we got a full box. It's not the prettiest this year, but it looks good. I have tried Ross rounds, I've gotten, maybe two boxes ever out of those after out of about five attempts uh, this year i put it on just to make space i didn't even wasn't even worried about making ross rounds they filled a few of them but i just stuck it on because i was out of supers but uh those things man timing is everything with those ross rounds and strength of course to me the comb honey is just a little bit easier so all of that was said to tell you what I did when you if you look at that other video how I make the boxes I kind of changed my ways now I drop a little wax in the grooves to hold the foundation in I've had good success with comb honey I make one box a year and uh, let's go in and I'll tell you a little bit more about how that pans out monetarily now my brand new $24 microphone is gonna pick up the AC I'm sorry about that but I've got it on the dry sitting keeping the humidity down in here these are my comb honey frames I think they're a little bit loose but I be careful they're not the prettiest this year got a little indentation but they're fat on that side and we're going to cut these up in just a minute again these are shallow and um they're just a nice product it's just it's just a nice product to add to the honey table at the market people like it most of it's novelty and out of this frame i'll get how many will i get four yeah because there's 10 frames i can get 40 out of a box so i'll get four squares and then i'll get a strip that I'll cut and I'll make chunk honey in a jar with and those do sell good so let's talk candidly about the money involved with comb honey again I do one box a year if I do one box a year and look I can, I barely and down here in the south I'm able to get 15 bucks for a three and a half a three and a half inch square of comb honey 
I actually dropped it one year to 12 and sold it for two years at 12 a buck. I just wasn't, people don't buy it that much. So it's a slow seller for me, but it does eventually all sell. We went back to 15 and we were able to sell it all last year. And out of each frame, I'll show you when I cut it, I do get one strip that I can make chunk honey out of. But let's not even count the chunk honey, that the excess that I use. And let's just count if I were to get 35 squares out of the 40 that I can get. At 15 bucks a piece, for one shallow super of comb honey, even though it sells slow, it's $525. That's pretty good. All right, so let's look at a liquid uh, box, a medium. Medium of nine frames. You can get about three gallons, but let's just say two and a half on a, on a less full one. So let's go with two and a half gallons at, um, and, and how many pounds that is. And let's just see what I charge per pound. So at, at 12 pounds per gallon, that's what, 30, gall uh, 30 pounds? 30 pounds at eight bucks, a, uh, and I sell mine for eight bucks a pound. Let's go times eight point, $240. $240, they will sell quicker now. I'll sell 31 pound bottles in a month, no problem, probably. So they'll move faster. I'll get instant cash at $240 versus over 500 for the comb honey. So for me to throw one comb honey super on is not a bad deal. That's the cold hard cash side of it. So it pays for me to throw one super on there and again, almost every year I get one I've had two years of unusable and then one year of a little bit of brew that is the first time last year I ever got brewed in one so but even if you get half a box say I get 375 bucks still more than a $240 super of liquid honey 240 maybe to 300 just depends there you go that's the cold hard cash fact of it if you really want to get down to it I do have to pay for this hobby. So I take the frame and I'll, this one don't fit all the way, but at least fits on the ends here. And all I do is to take, I got this little serrated knife and cut the whole thing out. Now, I got some cracks. I'm afraid we're gonna have an issue with cracked comb. I'll explain why that is and what has happened, but it's very disheartening. And if that's the case, I end up just making chunk honey out of it. Again, I still make more money off of it, but uh, it's a little reduced from having the nice premium cut cone. Now these frames aren't premium because they're kind of cattywampus a little bit, but that's a beautiful honey, huh? That's all right, they're gonna fit in the box. I'm trying to cut out that, that right there, that bottom stuff. This one's on the side. All right, then I take it and lift it out. And there we have our nice comb honey. Now, I freeze all of my comb honey prior to doing this and what I've noticed the last couple years it never happened before it's only happened recently where when I froze it it um in the frame I had a lot of cracks and it didn't give me perfect squares uh, that's frustrating because it kind of ruins it um, but I've frozen it in the containers after I've cut it and it's been fine. Freezing? Why do you ask? Why am I freezing it? Well, first of all, honey is if you freeze it, it won't crystallize. It only crystallizes refrigerated. So you freeze it to kill any small hive beetle eggs that are on that frame. Those small hive beetles, in the life cycle of a small hive beetle, uh, will lay eggs all in the cracks and crevices and any empty cones like those empty cells. Two to three days they'll hatch out and you'll have hive beetle larvae to begin to eat through your honey. One good thing about dehumidifying a room is you bring that humidity down below 50%. It desiccates those eggs and kills them. Well, I go the extra mile and I freeze all my comb honey. So sometimes I've, I've frozen the frames in years past and never had a problem with them cracking. Last year I seen it for the first time and again this year. I don't know if it's, maybe I had them leaning a little bit and as they begin to freeze, I don't know. The stress is on them. 
These have been frozen almost three weeks. Small hive beetles will really ruin your uh, honey business if you hand somebody a comb honey which begins to just have a bunch of hive beetle larvae. <laughs> Well, you would see it before you got to the market, I'm sure, but because uh, two to three days and they're hatching out. Uh, so by the time you bring it in, they should be hatching out. You don't want that. That's why you freeze it. That's the ugly truth that you don't hear everywhere about that. But that, that would uh, never had it happen, don't want it to happen. All right, let's measure these out. We're going to cut them up. And I'm going to show you how I cut them up, how I measure them, and what I put them in. They make handy dandy cutters like this. Pierce makes a beautiful one that's heated and everything. I do not use this to cut with. I use this simply to measure. I bought it to cut with, it didn't work well. Everybody told me we use hot water, use warm water, warm it, cool it, rinse it each time. It just doesn't do that good for me. I don't like it. So what I do is I just simply go like this, like this, And again like this and one more time like this that's what I do yeah it's made for cutting but I can really just take this thing right here go just as fast and just as smooth I'm just worried about the cracks and so now you see this last piece left that will be my chunk honey that goes in my honey jar. Perfect piece for a pint jar. Perfect. And that's what I do, folks. It's just that simple. Always put the ugly side down because it'll go on the bottom. Because there's always, you, you, you put the uglier of the two sides down. And you see there's a crack right there. I just saw it. All right, well, we're, we're all right for now. So here's what I do next. I just said in that last statement, here's what I do next. This is what Mike does. You know what I'm gonna say, guys. Those of you who've been with me forever, and those of you who've only been with me a couple videos, it's not a how-to video. This is a how I do video, okay? Comb honey, however you choose to do it, your business. Well, there's a, a other videos out there, other guys that do this exclusively. They do tons of this stuff. They're the experts, not me. I do one box a year. This is what I do with it here to drain it because you want the presentation to look nice. That is the nice thing about a Ross round. If you can time it out perfectly, Ross rounds are so handy. Man, they're so nice because all you do is pop the frames apart, trim the rings, put the lid and the bottom on, wrap it, sticker it, you're done. No cutting, no draining, no trimming. So we take the pieces that are cut, they're draining. I usually wouldn't have them this far, but my table is taken up. And I sit them here to drain. Because you want, you don't want the bottom of your container completely full of honey. It just doesn't look as good. So I drain them on these cookie sheets. So what we have, let's move this one over. Got to have space between them to drain. And there you go. Um, if we have a broken or busted frame, or, or I did damage one frame with a hive tool. The super went to fall and I grabbed it and had the hive tool in my hand and jammed it through there. But I think it was enough, it was on the edge where I could make chunk honey out of it. But if that is the case, if I have to salvage two or three squares, I chop them up, chunk honey. Make something out of it for sure. Even if you take a piece and just, it's all cattywampused up, you can take that and just cut it in little pieces and put it in small rubbermaid dishes and give it as samples or the kids like them at the markets. Always something to do with it. They'll do the same thing and I'm going slow. You gotta cut a little bit faster like that. I'm just I saw those cracks and I'm a little nervous about those cracks. So I want to be careful. There's a crack right there, I just saw it. It's going right down there. Just want to be careful with them. I've never seen it do it like it did it last year and this year. I think I might have had them leaning too much. There's a crack. Y'all can see that crack. See that crack right there? Fortunately, it's on the end. Let's take the stress off of it. Is 
I try. I don't like that in there. I gotta. I need to cut that. Those empty cells out. I don't like those. Those are not good. And bad appearance, I think. Right, let's see. There's a crack all the way across. That's the one I saw a minute ago. Oh yeah, this whole thing is cracked up. There it goes. Y'all see that? No problem. We'll still salvage three, maybe. So the end one is kind of cracked. I can split the difference, maybe. But let's see what we can get out of it. I know there's a crack right about here where it's going to hit. Yeah, see that one's not going to make. It's not going to make. We'll cut it anyway and see what we got. move this over yeah see it's cracked on the back so this one and what i'll do with these little ones and also it's got some empty cells i'll actually knock a couple bucks off of those people i don't have a problem i like to really make sure i'm selling quality so if i have to knock a few bucks off to make it you know make up for a uh, Something like that, I will. Alright, let's move this over. Oh man, that we don't want. You don't want the, you don't want the wet honey all over this. I know that much. I don't know how they judge home honey, but I know you wouldn't want that. This one, I'm going to try and cut it through that one. Yeah, it's broke. So, actually, that'd be fine. Again, I'll knock a buck or two off of that. That's no problem. I'll use the other one for some chunk honey and some novelty stuff. That's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to cut the rest of these. I'm going to put them on drain, and I'll get back with you. We'll see where we're at. So, the one I damaged with the hive tool when I jammed it through... Fortunately, it was on the very end. That's where the hive tool jammed up in it. The box went to fall over. Had it in my hand, reached up, and the hive tool went in the... It, the hive tool just went up in the box. This one cracked. So that come off the edge. So I got at least one deficient, nasty-looking one. Uh, some of these I'm going to have to trim. You know, they should be this size, not this size. Trim a little bit off. Of course, I reap the rewards of the scraps. Mm -hmm. mm. Alright, so good. They're draining real well. You see all the honey down the plate, everything's coming down off the sides. That's what I want. These are very cool still, so it takes a while to drain. So, so let's go ahead. This stuff is drained for probably an hour now. It's cool, so it's not gonna drain a lot, but I'm already seeing the sides are a lot drier than they were, and this is what I'm looking for. You can see empty cells like this one especially on the sides now the problem is they're going to go out to the market in the warmth and they are going to drop some more but to get the most that we can out of uh that's all we're doing here so they'll always have a little bit in the bottom now i just used the clamshells that you can buy at man lake i think they're cn 444 is their item number not trying to advertise for man lake you know necessarily but but all i do is i put them in these i, I make sure i've got the best side and i, and I already done that I look at that side real quick but the best side is that one and they fit nice and tight right in there so it drops right in I don't like too much honey on the tops I got a little bit on this one I think it makes for a bad presentation personally but you just take this closed and I actually have I got a ref I'm going to redesign my decals but what I have that's the decal I have it says comb honey on it I consider the, the hinge the top personally and I, I try to run the you know, you want, I like the comb running across, and then I just put the sticker on. Well, I'm trying to do this one-handed, and really i do this later, but I'll do them all at once. You just stick it on there, and that's my presentation. And I really think what sells these things helps when they just look pretty and they look just fascinating. 
and um, I like to explain to the people, and this is true, it's not a, it's not a sales gimmick or tactic or anything. Um, the honey in the comb, for whatever reason, I don't know if it's because it, the stuff extracted gets into the oxygen, or I don't know. But what I know is there's something about that burst of flavor when you bite into that little piece of comb. And I usually keep one of the jagged ones I'll probably keep as a sampler. Like I was telling you earlier, some of the small pieces that can't be used, just use them as samples. And people taste it and they want to take it home with them. I explained to them how you can take a butter knife and, and just take it and run it into that thing, wax it all, and spread it over across hot toast, wax and everything, and just eat that thing up. And it's so delicious. You can just chew on it. You can swallow the wax. You don't have to swallow the wax. I explained, I used these to explain to them about the cappings when they asked about our candles. I show them the bar of wax that we sell or the candles and I say alright see these white cappings we cut those off and we save them you know so it's it's a neat little thing to have at your table and it's not too much to just throw one shallow super on your colony and get yourself 20 to 40 blocks however good they do that year I think this year we probably get 30 at least I would hope depends how many crack um, only one has cracked badly the rest seem to be fine so far I've got 16 so far and I haven't even gotten halfway through the box. So, comb honey is a, is a, it's a neat thing to make. It's fun to make. I think it goes back to traditional. I like to explain to people about the older, older generations that a lot of them, this is how they ate their honey. They ate their honey in the comb. Not everybody had extractors. Only the very big operations had them. Some people made them homemade. Some people crushed and strained. A lot of people just had the wax and would cut it out and take and eat it. So I like to explain that. And people really enjoy at your honey table when you can talk about, you know, intelligently talk about what's been, what, where the honey came from, what it's used for, what it, how it was in the past, how the bees made this, how you made this. You know, it's just fun. It's just another fun item for the table. And then I box them all up like this and label them at the end. Okay, I'm gonna wrap this up and uh, at least box what I got for you. Well, there we are, folks. That's a start. That's a good start. Do, I don't know, maybe another two or three frames. Get them packaged up, drained, and all that. And I'll finish the rest tomorrow. Some of you have asked, so. There you go. I didn't do the video this year of putting the box together. I think I did it last year. I think I put it in the link or in the top of the thing. And if I did, I'll put it in the description as well. I've been using these frames for a long time. So I'll take those out to the bee shed today, out to the, where they keep the supers at. And I'll let them clean them out tomorrow while I'm gone to church. All right, guys, I appreciate all y'all watching. Appreciate all y'all support. Hope you like this video about comb honey and how I do comb honey. If you did like it, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you don't mind, of course. And I appreciate each and every one of you for watching this video. Hope to hear from you in the comments. This is Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike, and I do comb honey sometimes, every now and again, at least once a year. Y'all have a wonderful evening, and may God bless you. We'll see y'all later.